Into the Storm, 1 Samuel 17. We have Michael Mills. Good to be here. He's here. We were pretty close to our on-time start, our on-time departure. Uh, Tasia Persevich. T. Jim. James Dean Hensel. What's up, people? Um, that was a terrible workout earlier. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not like, okay. I literally just left my watch running in the car because my heart rate was still at like 100. Still counts. Count it as move calories. <laughs> count it as move calories. I'm like, I'm still working out. <laughs> my sole purpose in life now is to close my rings on my Apple Watch right now. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> I made Ben stay and hang around for round three, even though he's like, I'm done at two. I was like, no, you're not. No, you're, this no, morning, no. Oh, we're like, Ben, what are you here for? Are you filming? He's like, no, Rich, just text me to work out. I'm here. I love it. Think about how fit you're going to get. So fit. You're gonna no. I mean, you're you're already really fit, but you're gonna get really fit. <laughs> you're already crazy. I'm very, I'm very today. I felt unfit you crushed today. the first set, so that's what matters. You're right. I'm really glad I didn't know he was trying to get out after two because oh, he tried. I would have quit. I honestly, I thought, I thought about it. I was looking at a watch. I'm like, it's I ten. It's ten like, fifty two. Go. I told Mike we'd start at eleven thirty. <laughs> Dang it, this round's gonna take about eight minutes. All right, I can finish this. Well, I could watch as Haley got faster. You got a little slower, so like the Every gap round. was going three like reps. this. Three rounds, three reps. <laughs> he goes, I'm done F two because she's gonna catch me on this one. I was like, that's exactly why I need you to do it because I made him go with her. And he did one less rope climb each time and three less snatches and cleans just to give her a push. Because I was like, mentally, I'm not in the state to push you right now, Haley. Like, I don't want to hurt. <laughs> and so still hurt, Ben though. did it. Good job, Ben. Sacrificial Sacrifice. Lamb. There we go. Service. <laughs> we we'll did start that uh, podcast off with that. 15 rounds yesterday. Bye, Ben. 15 rounds of 15 calories, one for one, Hales and I. On? On the Echo Bike. And was that where was that? When was that? Just Yesterday? her and I. On Wednesday. After after Greg had left. Wednesday. 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 Okay. Yeah, you guys were gone somewhere. I don't know. I was and downstairs. I, I like hung in there. Yeah. You know, and I wasn't trying to. I was just trying to keep my face straight. Yeah. And I went home and died. died. I literally <laughs> was laying on the couch like I don't feel okay. <laughs> she is incredible. You're like good you work, know? Hales. Yeah, she's fit. <laughs> she's oh very fit. God. All right, First Samuel 17. Praise and we'll go. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you once again uh, for this group and their heart for you. Thank you for uh, just keeping us safe. And I just pray that your words be spoken through us and that we would glorify you in all that we do. And just pray that anybody who needs to hear, the, hear this, hears this, um, and that you would soften their hearts to your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Take my gum out, Kurt. All right, Goliath challenges the Israelites. Oh man, this is mm. one of, has one of the best comebacks in all of all of this everything. Epic. The Philistines now mustered their army for battle and camped between Soka in Judah and Azekah in Ephes Demim. Okay. So <laughs> Saul countered by gathering his Israelite troops near the valley of Elah. So the Philistines and the Israelites faced each other on opposite hills with a valley between them. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet, and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor, and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Goliath stood and shouted and taunted across it, the across to the Israelites, "Why are all why wow why are you all coming out to fight?" He called, "I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man and come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me." When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Jesse sends David to Saul's camp. Now David was a son of man, son of a man named Jesse, an Aphrathite from the from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at the time, and he had eight sons. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Ab, Abinab, and Shimei, 
had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed in with Saul's army. But David went back and forth so he could help his father with his sheep in Bethlehem. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champion strutted out in front of the Israelite army. One day, Jesse said to David, Take this basket, basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give, them, give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report how they are doing. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah fighting with, against the Philistines. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with the shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with his keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came up to the Philistine ranks. <clears throat> then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the Israel army. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from taxes. I'm in. David asked the soldiers standing nearby, What will a man get for killing the Philistines and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway? Philistine anyway. And he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, Yes, that is the reward for killing him. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing here, around here anyway? He demanded. What about those few sheep, few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. What have I done now, David replied. I was only asking a question. He walked over some of the others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Don't worry about the Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight the Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's a man of war since, your youth, since his youth. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I've done this with both lions and bears, and I'll do it with this pagan Philistine too. For he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord <clears throat> who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from the stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and the sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David, and with, <clears throat> with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt for this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David. That you have come to, at me with a stick? He cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here. I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine. You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies and the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know the Lord rescues the people, but not, the sword, not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give, it, give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell flat on his face, on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road of Sherem as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army turned and plundered the deserted Philistine camp. David took the Philistine's head to Jerusalem, but he stored the man's armor in his own tent. As Saul 
watched David go out to fight the Philistine, he asked Abner of the commander, the commander of his army, Abner, whose son is this young man? I don't really know, Abner declared. We'll find out who he is, the king told him. As soon as David returned from King Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul with Philistine's head in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man, Saul said. And David replied, his name is Jesse, and we live in Bethlehem. I thought there was a part in there where he's like, you son of an uncircumcised Philistine. Or <laughs> well, something there's like another that. version. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 That's my yeah. favorite. I don't know what version it is, but that's my favorite comeback. You son of an uncircumcised <laughs> Philistine. Like King James, New King James. <laughs> Before I forget, something that stuck out to me in this. Um, he grabs five stones. Yes, and so it's not that he thinks he's going to miss. So that's like a, a misconception, I guess. Uh, Goliath had four brothers. Oh, and so I never was, heard this. And he was ready to take out the other four if he had to. Is one of the stories that I heard. I don't know. I like but that. They said something about that in the notes. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, that, I don't know. That comeback for me is like, you son of an uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah. Like, yeah. so good. It's such a like, I don't know. Yeah. So your your comment there, Rich. I I had a preacher a couple of years ago. He talking about how God provides and the the plan is always bigger than you know what you think is in front of you. And he he talks about that Goliath having four brothers. And so I looked it up, and um, it's referenced in 2 Samuel chapter 21. And you kind of have to do some, um, it's not clear, so there is a little bit of you yeah, know, debate. Yeah. It makes the stories, because that is a good question. Why do you take five, five, stones. five stones? But um, here, in certain like chapter or verse 19, it talks about um, there's four giants uh, from... The, one of them was killed by the brother of the Goliath of Goliath of Gath, um, a huge man with six fingers, one in each hand. And there was four Philistines, and they were all descendants of the giants of Gath, but David and his warriors killed them. So it doesn't explicitly say that they were the brothers of Goliath, right. but some scholars descendants, think that, yeah. yeah. But I want to believe that they were the brothers yeah, of Goliath. Yeah, he was ready. that makes it sound cooler. Cooler, yeah. <laughs> um, the... That's a really long uh, verse or chapter, I guess, right there. Um, but Day of War, I always come back to it. Yeah, He does such a good job. Because that, that's the intro to the awesome first books. book of Day of War. Yeah. And I never read intros, but I, I'm glad I read, read that one. But it mm-hmm. talks about, like, it just gives so much color to that story of him talking about, you know, like, grabbing the five stones, feeling around for different stones, the perfect stone, and blah, blah, blah. And then talking about how he's running at him and like measuring as he's running. It's so good. They're mm. so good. Like the thing that strikes me right off the bat is just the confidence that he had yeah. immediately. I mean, he's, he, he, he's talking to Saul that way. He's talking to his brothers that way. He's talking to everybody like, this is what's, this is what's getting ready to happen. Mm. And he wavers never, never in the middle of that whole process. And he's nobody. He's the shepherd kid, you know? Yeah. I don't I, like they didn't even really recognize him in his family, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was just a kid that nobody cared about. Yeah. I thought it was interesting how when his brothers are obviously, they're treating him like a brother, like, Oh, you're like little and nothing. But when he asks a question, they just don't even answer his question. They're just like, no, there's a reward. Like he's like, but we're fighting for God. And they're like, not even, it just goes like this, like mm. over everyone else's head. And they're like, but there's a reward. We can have a wife and tax free. <laughs> right. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> like that's what everyone's like thinking about. Sometimes um. like sometimes somebody somebody was talking about patience this week and kind of talking to me about patience and I listened to him. And patience to them meant put it in neutral. Mm-hmm. Stand here and do nothing. Yeah. And I don't like that. I think there's we should always be moving forward in some way. And I love that David you know, the, the big moment, there's the big moment, right? This is the big moment, him and, and Goliath. And now everybody's going to get to see it. And he's prepared. Mm-hmm. He did all the work in the wilderness by himself, talking to God, praying, singing, playing the harp, doing all the things, you know, the wild animals, all of yeah. that. He did everything he needed to do alone way before he ever got ready. in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was ready. And <clears throat> that goes along with this Psalm 144, 1. Praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. Love that. He's my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. 
He is my shield and I take refuge in him. He makes the nations submit to me. So that's mm. David's writing that. Yeah. But that's perfect for mm. exactly what you know, you're saying there and what he does there. He's just like, I don't need this shield. I don't need this stuff. Like God's trained me for this. You yeah. know? And so, yeah, it's exactly that. It's like the things that you don't just get to where you are by waiting always, you know, like patience, like you're saying, patience is a little bit different than waiting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like it's yeah. waiting. I don't know. People, I think get those two mixed up. Like patience doesn't mean you're just like, all right, I'm going to sit here and doesn't mean thumbs. stand here and do nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And so, but I mean, patience is definitely something I need to work on. For sure. Or we all really need to work on. But like, there's a fine line, I guess, between yeah. patience and waiting. And it gets, it's tough, you know? Patience as a soft skill is a really good thing. You know what I mean? Having that as a skill in our lives. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm talking about like practical application. Yeah. Um, you know, getting where God wants us to be. Sometimes there's this philosophical approach of I'm going to stand right here and be really quiet and wait for God to talk to me and Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do anything. And I'm not so sure. I mean, there's all kinds of parables in the Bible where God's upset with people who didn't do anything with the stuff that he gave them, the talents or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know? So I just love David as an example of... He knows God's going to... He's doing it for. I mean, obviously God's speaking to him somehow. I'd much rather be the kind of person or be around people who you got to hold back a little bit. Hey, man, slow down, bro. You know? Yeah. And, instead of trying to kick him forward. Right. And David was that dude. Mm-hmm. He was just, he was, he knew who God, he knew who he was with God, which is what I love because I'm not that person all the time. I really envy that in David's life. Yeah. His heart was for God. And, and then he was ready to go, you Almost. know, prepared. Yeah. I was thinking preparation is the key that, that, you know, those hours in the wilderness chasing these wild animals down. You know, it's one thing to defend the sheep, mm-hmm. but then to flip it and he's now pursuing mm-hmm. yeah. who was trying to kill his sheep, you know, and, and that shows his character. But I, I was thinking about, about you, Rich, and like in your success in Tasia, what people see is not the only preparation no, that right. you have. Right. And, and, and everybody, I mean, you can watch just about anybody work out or, you know, see their videos, but it's the things behind the scene that makes you guys great. And it's the same thing here with David that, you know, the, it's surprised so much that's undocumented yeah. that made him who he was. And then once, you know, you add that with, he's where God wants him to be. He's been anointed as the next King. He pours his spirit in him, and now you pretty much have a deadly combination Mm. of someone who's empowered to go forward in the will of God. Right. And it's pretty awesome. Uh, Yeah, I mean, everybody wants that secret. Like, what's what's the secret? How'd you get where you are? Like, if you could pinpoint one thing, and I'm like, there's not one thing. Like, it's Mm. my upbringing from my parents. It's the fact that I was, you know, a, a large family of competitive people and our parents pushing us, having you know, youth coaches and high school coaches that pushed us and wanted more from us and held us accountable. All those things, being a firefighter, all those things have kind of perfect storm. And it's exactly what happens here with David. Like, you know, was out by himself a lot. You know, Mm -hmm. he was the youngest, probably got beat up on a lot, had to fight for himself, had to, you know, it doesn't talk about those type of things, but we all know how that stuff works. If you're the one youngest of eight brothers or whatever, you're going to (laughs) get beat up on, right? So you're going to toughen up. I mean, I I look at Violet. I look at Violet. And how tough she is and how Mm -hmm. self-sufficient she is because Lakeland and Trice, I mean, she follows Trice around a ton, but it's just like, she's so self-sufficient because she's she's kind of, she's a third kid. She's like, all right, she watches everybody else, sees what not to do, sees how to get away with stuff and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that you were saying though, talking about, you know, somebody that's always wanted to go. David was like that, always wanted to go, always out in battle, always leading his men. What was the one of the main times he got in trouble hmm. was when he didn't go with his That's men. That's right. It said, it, mm-hmm. well, I'm skipping the forward. Of the year. Mm-hmm. I'm skipping yep. forward. And it says, the time of year when kings usually go to battle, David stayed back. Mm-hmm. When do we get in trouble? Yeah. When we're not when we're like, idle. Idle hands. Idle yep. hands, devil work. I don't know. Yeah. You know, whatever. That's the saying. But yeah. I mean, that's when it happened. And so, you know, you got to keep yourself busy, but mm-hmm. not. I don't know. It's you know we talk and everybody wants to talk about balance. Balance. I don't. Mm. You don't. You've said it multiple times. I don't think balance is necessarily a good thing. If you want to be the best at anything, David yeah. wasn't balanced. You know, so balance is a soft skill. Again, not such a bad thing, but 
intent and yeah. that's one of your core values yeah one of your personal values is being intentional if you want to be great you got to be intentional and you can't be intentional with everything got to pick three or four or five things and really be excellent at those things mm -hmm. um and then there's no balance no you're working out way more than everybody else yep. you're you're dieting and paying attention to that way more than everybody else you're spending way more time with your family and I, I mean this like in an intentional manner, yeah. trying to get from the next thing to the next thing. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, it's, that's a great example. I mean, God kind of called David to be the guy who created space yep. for Israel to kind of be on the map, mm -hmm. you know, and to draw closer. And when he wasn't in that space, it wasn't good for that's him. That's what, yeah. He got tripped up. Yeah, that's the one like you're all, I mean, and you can, from personal experience, when I don't have something that I'm training for or mm -hmm. doing or working towards, I mean, it's not good because I'm just, you know, there's so many things that creep into your head and so many of those things that, that I mean, it's, you know, the sin of the flesh and mm -hmm. those things are hard to battle when you're not yeah. intentional. The word of God tells us to keep our mind you know, on God, stayed on God, mm -hmm. directed there. Mm -hmm. And when you're a man I'm, or a woman, I don't want to exclude anybody, but when you're a person who's designed to be moving forward, mm -hmm. to be competing and, and, and to be in action, you need to be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think that's why the other values in our lives are important because they help, help us be intentional when we need to slow down or sacrifice. But, um, and David's life proves it as we read later, you know, gets himself in trouble. Hanging out on the rooftop. Yep. Things got sideways. Real fast. <laughs> if, if Doc was here, and this is confession time for me, so I apologize. Go for send, it. Send me a bill later. But we would always, we talk about me and Doc and one other guy. We, you know, when we would see these idle times approaching in our lives, we knew that that was, would be when our minds would relax. Mm -hmm. And we would, you know, we would hold each other accountable during those times. Maybe when school relaxed a little bit and we had some more time at home or um, we just had some you know where you just as guys we'd find ourselves you know idle and bored and maybe not with the acting out in purpose like we needed to and so over the years that's what we you know we just try to be Knew more intentional and, and checking up on each other you know we might meet more often for coffee or for lunch or something like that and just um, you know, that was something that we found in each other just like this, you know, and if, if maybe who knows if David had that kind of accountability, Yeah. you know? Yeah. No, I mean, it doesn't say that. I mean, he did have his men and go to it battle. Does, it mm -hmm. does say he had his three yeah. in his 30, you know, he had mm -hmm. his men. So who knows? Uh, but yeah, I mean, for us, like this time of year, it's tough, especially, you know, we had all this build up for this competition. It didn't happen, um, you know, kind of outside, you know, everybody I know it's first world problems for sure, but you're kind of like, all right, what next? And so, you know, we kind of found this triathlon we're doing this weekend. So it gives us some purpose. And then the next two weeks after that, I've got, you know, going on this hunting trip out West. So I'm probably in perfectly fine physical condition for that. But if I have something to like look forward to and train for, then it just keeps me on task. And so it's just looking for those things, I guess, and finding things that, hey, this is something I need to work on. For me, physically, that's that's what I'm trying to do. And then, you know, obviously, business-wise, same thing. But, uh, yeah, just trying to keep yourself not busy. I don't want to say busy because we don't want just yeah. busy work, like, without mm -hmm. intent. Mm -hmm. uh, but something to train for and strive for. Yeah, something moving, you yeah. know. It doesn't, like, if that's, if that's the way you're created, and Tasia's the same. I mean, th there's no question that, that 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 moving and competing is in who she be or mm -hmm. in her design. It's it's in me. Right. I'm just 52 years old and can't physically do some of the things I used to do, but I still have to pay attention to that and be doing that. Right. And then there are other places in my life where my design or my purpose has to play out now. Mm -hmm. Places where I'm coming forward and you know, my, I don't have younger children like you guys do now, so there's not as much focus there anymore right. for me. So. Um, I don't know. To, to me, David probably is my most favorite character in the Bible because yeah. he's mm -hmm. chasing God with all his heart, which is cool. He's sold out. He's all in. Screws it up. And he screws it up. Comes back. Yeah. Then he, mm -hmm. then he works hard to get it fixed. But yeah, I mean, that's exactly, it's, I mean, that's why, like I said, I, I connect so well with him is like, he knows where he's like, he has his center and that's, you know, you talk about with 
mindset stuff is you have your center and hey we're gonna deviate like we know like we're we're human um, we're gonna fall short we're gonna fail but if we always center back and for me for most all of us here God is the center for David God is the center but you have a measure and you know where you're going and you know that all right I screwed up where I need to get back to God and that's I think <clears throat> we've said it multiple times but being a man after God's own heart, like mm. that would be the ultimate compliment mm. uh, of anybody. You know, if anybody was to say that about me, that's what I would want, you know? So yeah. that's, I think that's the goal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this basically is pretty straightforward. Like, you know, it's kind of funny that uh, Saul just every, I mean, uh, Goliath every morning comes out for 40 days. They're just on these mm. two two hillsides just like isn't that interesting yeah. yeah what's the story with that I know there's but, and also something that caught me is like why are we talking about telling us who David is again we know who David was mm-hmm. already to this yeah. point mm-hmm. and then Saul's like who's David and you're like I don't know if you know they talk about him you know <laughs> yeah. playing the harp for him so maybe yeah. some of this is out yeah. of order but right. I was just like wait a minute yeah so well, one thing that I found was interesting just shifting to Goliath is that he didn't actually do anything, you know, in those 40 days, but incite fear into people and just like the power of fear and how it can control us and like how we act. And it made me think of sports because so like when we're in the corral or whatever, how many times, at least maybe not for you as much as you're, you know, legit, but like (laughs) if I've let like fear overcome me, thank you, before we go out and you've seen this in workouts we've done together where it's almost like you lose before you're even there. Mm -hmm. Or if you go out with confidence, you win before you're there. And it's like this intimidation of like you trying to intimidate the other teams. You know what I mean? Like we don't actually do that, but kind of just in confidence. Like, yeah, you don't even for us, like, I mean, what could be going on? And I try to tell you guys, Hey, like for me, what I've noticed is I can be a mess on the inside completely. Like every time before I go out to compete, Nine times out of ten, I'm like, I hate this. I don't know why I do this. And we talk about this between us, like inside our group. We're like, (laughs) what are we doing? But then as soon as, you know, we walk out or people see us, it's just straight face. And I've told people, I think I've said it to you a couple times, like, hey, relax. Yeah. Like, calm your face. Like, because if you can look under control, even no matter what's going on inside, if you were were doing it in the middle of a workout and you're dying and you look over and somebody's completely stone-faced, Mm -hmm. that's going to mess with you a little bit, right? Yeah. And that's what you want to do. For sure. And I've actually kind of learned that not only from you, but from Haley too, Yeah. which she's like so stone faced. Haley shows no emotion, no matter what. She'll be like dead and you'll know (laughs) she's dead and she's stone faced. And I admire that about her of like, just, you know, that's a great competitor. Like you're stone faced before you go out while you're there. Yeah. Yeah, And you see how emotion in competing can really ruin people. My, my favorite is when Tasia starts to go to those, her, China does it a little bit too. China and does like, too. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, calm down. We're going to be okay. Okay. I've gotten better over the years. Yeah, you have. You've <laughs> infinitely better. But the, the best to me is Ted. Oh. Ted is, cannot, just can't rein it in. <laughs> no. Uh, love him. And he's going to give you all he's got. Like, yeah, there's no sure. question that Ted is giving you 1,000% of what he's got but you can tell it by his face because he's just like... And I felt bad because one time I was like, Ted, those deadlift days, I'm like, you need to fix your face. And I'm like, because it's... Or I'm going to fix it for you. <laughs> I'm going to fix it for fix you. Your face. But it's true, right? Like how these people, the, all of them were, the Israelites were in fear and Goliath hadn't even like... He, had a, he wasn't even like, you know... Done anything. He right. just... Was where's the, where's the battle at most of the time? In our head. In, head. in your mind. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, I mean, how many times you think about my son, we go to these baseball tournaments... And I mean, even in baseball and football, it's even more. You size people up. Yeah. Always. Dad, look at, look how big they are. Yeah. Who cares? Are you sure that they're like under 10 years old? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they, what do we always say? They put their pants on just like you do. Mm-hmm. You know, go out there and play your game. You'll yep. beat them. Mm-hmm. And, and most time, you know, a lot of times we do. I remember the first sanctional I went to, or it was sectional, sorry. The lingo's now all messed up. But first sectional I showed up to, I was literally, we're on the way to spring break. I show up and there's like 70 dudes that are just <laughs> jacked. <laughs> and I'm at that point, I'm 22, I guess, 22, 23, 23. And I'm like, all right, well, this is it. Uh, this was, sounded cool in theory, but, you know, we'll get an early jump on spring break. And then that's a CrossFit's one of the sports that you cannot size you people cannot up. You cannot size people look. up. Um, Aesthetics does not equal performance. No, for never. Sure. And so, but yeah, it's, it's so much. 
it's so true that uh, so true that you just you can't let appearance and you can't let your mind you've talked about it multiple times mm-hmm. how you, you like used to fear things mm-hmm. for and they would never come true how many like you'd think about these things that are bad are going to happen and you waste so much energy on them and nine times out of ten none of it comes true mm-hmm. like fear fear lives in the future it doesn't live in the present. Right. There's no such thing in this present moment as fear. Right. You're fearing what's going to happen. Right. Fear is an imagination, literally. It's where your mind goes in the future about something that may or may not happen. That's a fact. Yeah. Danger lives in the present. So danger we should pay attention to. Right. If there's something that's dangerous here where your feet are in this moment, we need to calculate that and deal with that. But fear, I love that little acronym. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real, fear. Um, And for me, that was huge in my life because I was afraid about every freaking thing after all that I went through. My mind always wandered off to what may or may not happen. And I had to battle really hard to bring my mind. Let's just deal with what, think about it. You can can deal with what you got right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You really can. And and actually the Bible talks about that. It tells us that we're not going to, he's not putting more on us than we can handle in this moment today, you know? So that's a big deal for me. And when I could separate that out, all right, dang it, that's fear. All right, let it go. Yeah. Is there any danger right now? No. All right, let's go to work. Yep. We're fine. Keep well, your head down, pay attention. You know? Jesus says it when he talks about the birds, you know, like mm. God's taking care of the birds. He's not going to take care of you. And yeah. so I think it's a great parallel there. But yeah, it's these, you know, everybody's, <laughs> Goliath just comes out and talks trash. <laughs> and Everyone's everybody's like, ah. just super afraid. And nobody's man enough until David shows up and he's like, hey, I'll do it. Send me. Send me. I'll go. Man. Yeah. That's another new Because I think it's thing. great, too. Not even one person went and tried for, like, yeah. the wife and the tax rate. They weren't even like, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. Like, Nobody. Hey, that dude's going to have it made, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. They're like, no, no, no. Think about that moment, though. Because he's, up until that point, he's really nobody and he's been hanging out on his own. Yeah. So he's prepared, like we talked about. And then he walks into that moment where he's 100% confident, goes walking across to maybe the greatest warrior in the region or whatever, yep. and he knows what's going down already. I mean, that's a huge moment. Huge. And to have that kind of confidence and to know, hey. and to know that God's with me, yep. and I get this, and this is the way this is going, that's epic. Yep. Like, that, there should be... I've seen some movies about this, and they suck. <laughs> there should be a way better movie made know, about David and Goliath, because that's a crazy uh, cool story. Cliff Graham's talked about making a movie... I just haven't heard anything because it's such a good story. Well, not even David and Goliath. Just the whole David yeah. story would be such that a good be movie. Cool. Right. This, well, the spiritual, you know, this whole, I mean, you can go back and forth that, you know, the enemy, meaning the devil, Satan. Satan. <laughs> Could it be mm, Satan? <laughs> you know, his, his platform that he operates on is fear. Fear. Right? I mean, that's. When he has that platform, he can crumble us of what could happen, what might happen. And and I think that that's what the world is experiencing right now because people are paying, paying attention to... Fear. Yeah. Fear is, is what is driving almost every decision that's being made. Everywhere. Right now, everywhere. And, you know, there are things that reasonable people should do. We should wash our hands... There's danger. There's danger. There's danger. Mm-hmm. Wash yeah. your hands. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you are feel led, feel led to wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Mm. You know, but should it paralyze us to the point that we can no longer function? You know, I say no. People, people listen to that now because the driving force is fear. You know, and especially early on. I mean, a couple months ago, it was like if you. I leave feel like your, it's getting worse. Yeah. It, again, and, and it may. Everybody, um, yeah. I think that's really good. That's really good advice. Um, because because we have to move forward. And if we want to talk about it just practically uh, as human beings and in the culture, we've got to move forward. So we've got to do all the things we can, do the best that we can, pay attention to the people who are hmm. that we need to protect, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. then we have to come forward. For sure. Um, and Gosh. not be. That that whole fear thing, It's it's, I mean, literally, if you could just take that and... I, I worked really hard on that. I, I'm, I decided that fear was a dragon, 
that's the way I pictured it in my mind. I needed to turn everything into some sort of a metaphor for my life. So I saw this giant dragon and I saw this knight running at the dragon. It's on your arm. Yeah, it's mm. on my arm. Literally, that's the metaphor for all of that. And when he breathed fire, I wanted to stand in it and I want to let it wash over me. That's what I used to see, literally. He just let it wash over me. Because if it was real, it was going to burn me. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't real. And the dragon wasn't real. And, and it didn't burn me and I could come forward. And I, I began to think about fear that way. And I really went from being really worried and afraid based on the things that had happened in my mm. life to, to being in a position where now I don't really want to be around fearful people. Right. I don't want any of that. No. I don't want any of that washing off or getting on me because mm. I fought hard to get clear of it. Worry and fear were the two things. Gone. If there's danger, let's pay attention to it. Yeah. Holy crap. Let's sure. deal with it. Let's yeah. be smart. But the rest of that, let's just let that go and keep coming forward. Right. right now. And to be clear, we're not saying there's not danger in some of this stuff that's going on For right sure. now. There is. But, and we're saying, like Mike said, be smart. 100%. But let's not drive fear and, and herd people by fear, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, man, that's so good. You know, a couple of things just... You know, the Bible tells us that, that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, right? Mm-hmm. All that is is a sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? It's a sound. Mm-hmm. Which could, could, I mean, if I was in this, the African safari and I heard it, crap out of it'd you. scare the crap out of me. But does that mean that he's, you know, he's, he's coming to me? No. But you have reason to be fear, right? Fearful. And it reminded me of a verse in Isaiah 14. And... It, t- it talks about the fall of Lucifer out of heaven and, and this whole thing. And I've always thought this is really cool. In verse 17, it says, Is this the one, meaning Satan, who destroyed the world and made it into a wasteland? Is this the king who demolished the world's greatest cities? cities? Oh, man, I'm, I'm not going to be able to find it. But basically, I'll find it some at some point. But the whole thing is like, is this really, I mean, when we see Satan one day, we're going to look at him and say, is, it. is this the one? Mm-hmm. This is the one that we've been fearful this entire time, that we were afraid it's had us in bondage and, and gripped us with and paralyzed us from, from doing all the things that God's wanted us to do. This is the one? This and that, that, that's the, I mean, that's the approach David had. Yes, yeah. like. I, yeah, I, I like I'm that he's, he's not even worried about, he doesn't care that he gets a wife and no taxes. Yeah. Like he says here, who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should devi- defy the armies of the living God? He's like, I don't, I don't care that I get this stuff. Like, mm. I'm not in it for the reward. I'm like, he's defending God's armor, armor mm. or honor as if God needs that. But mm. I mean, it's pretty cool that he's it like, is nah. awesome. yeah. I think sometimes we have to get like, the the word of God clearly tells us that that fear, that's not from God. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Any any of that, whether it's a dream or an imagination or whatever, I hear this sometimes, interpret this dream, do this. That's not a God thing, man. God didn't send me that because God says... God says it's, it's love and it's power and it's a sound mind. Yep. Sound mind means clearly thinking. Right. My brain's working really well. Right. And I got to the place in my life where I was so sick and tired of being afraid that I'd just as soon be dead as afraid. Right. I mean, I really did. Yeah. Like, I am tired of get up and every day and being bent out of shape and, and having this wash over me and not being able to move forward. So I would just as soon fail. Yeah. Just what? face down fail as to continue to be afraid. Parallel to that current, that, this current situation we're in, my grandfather, my grandmother, opposite sides. My grandma's 85. My grandfather's 80. And everybody's like, why aren't you quarantined? Why aren't you this? And he's like, my grandpa's like, I'm 80 years old. I don't want to live the last couple years of my life in fear of, you know, he's like, what, what kind of life is that? My grandma the same way. She got, yeah. they had a, she had a, some type of growth on her lung or something like that. So you know, she's like, I don't, like, I'm not going to do chemo. She's like, I'm 85 years old. I'm going to live my life. And she turns out it's not cancerous. It's just, she's old. <laughs> yeah. She'll say that. Yeah. Uh, she's the best. But both of them are just like, I'm not going to, like, we've lived this long. We've lived a good life. I don't want to ruin it or end it. You know, I want to finish well. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be in quarantine by myself all the time. Like, yeah. there's no way to live. And that's mm-hmm. their choice. Right, right. It's their choice to do that. And so we, it. I want to be careful with, you know, because it's, 
it's a sensitive subject, but I don't want to force our will on other people. You right. know, like, I don't know. Well, Look, what I love about what you just said is that they're clearly, clearly sound mind yeah. thinking about their situation and just, and, and really choosing what they want to do. Both you know? of those t- two people are probably two of the closest people I've ever met or strongest people I've ever met in their faith. Yeah. Like my grandma, I swear she has a direct line to God. <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> she watches mass every single day. Like, amazing woman right and my grandfather the same way you know so it's like it's those are two people that you want to emulate and it's like if they're not you know right. live their life like we want to be smart of course yeah, yeah. and we don't want to be stupid and irresponsible or reckless but fear that's not what we're talking about we're not no. talking about boasting we're not no. talking about blow we're talking about we're walking talking about, up and coughing in somebody's face right. or anything but staying like, connected to yeah. values and yeah. being yeah. Smart. smart but think about it from you're going to a job interview you know, you're, you're getting ready to go out onto the competition floor. What in the world? You know, we, we know that if our emotions get out of control, we, lo- we lose fine motor skills. Mm-hmm. If our, if the pulse goes up and the breathing, go, you, you're not going to be able to perform and be the best that, that you could be in that moment. So let's really work hard and create some tools where fear is not something that we walk out there with. Right. We can get super present and go into the job interview and do your best. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. And then work at it again. And if you don't win, come back and train harder. Yep. But, but I would rather be in a position to, to be able to go as hard as I can possibly go and do my best and fail as, a, as opposed to lose it even before I get out there. Yep. You know? And I spent a lot of my life doing that. I think, I think that's probably one of the reasons why I wasn't athletically as successful. Not I think. I know. Because I wasn't in control of my mind that way. I wasn't. I I physically was capable in many ways, but my mind wasn't strong enough. And it's something in your life that you've been able to quickly get a hold of and deal with and get really present and be able to compete. And it's been an important part of your success. Huge. Where I I, I just, I mean, I didn't have that. I had to fight through that. So now I really recognize it. I just thought about in athletics, it's funny, like at one point of your life, you have all the ability but you don't have the mindset. <laughs> and then, and then you have the mindset. Then you have the mindset. It's like when we played old man baseball a couple yeah. of years. My mind, you know, when the ball was hit to me or I had to block a ball or anything, it's like it was boom, sharp, yep. quick. And then my body lagged behind mm-hmm. about three seconds and I felt like a complete turd. You, <laughs> you, know? you are not a complete turd. <laughs> but. <laughs> but but still, it's just it's how all that works. And, you know, I, I, got, I was thinking, I was listening to an um, uh, interview with Dan Crenshaw congressman from texas yep. and he was talking about the seals they train you know calm breeds calm so when all this is swirling like what you do yep. with with tasia and the rest of the team and, and you guys help each other is that you know don't let your emotions rule you you know so that you can get out there and do what you got to do and then be an example for others yeah um, but the last thing i was thinking about was you know the new testament paul and, and something, this is going to sound really strange, and I tried to explain it to my wife, and I don't think I did a good job, but at some point, I, the way I got over the fear of coronavirus or whatever was that I really started thinking about what Paul said was, you know, to live is, is Christ, to die is gain. but to die is gain. And that means nothing to me until you really start thinking about dying. What's the worst that could happen? Death. I die. Well, the Bible says that, that's gain for me. Mm-hmm. You know, while I'm here, I'm going to honor Christ and give God the glory and do everything I can for my family. But if I die, I'm going to be in the presence of, and that's, that was a, it's still, I mean, it's, it's weird, kind of morbid, I guess, but that completely erases the enemy's ability to have fear over your life. Mm-hmm. If you can come to that reality, mm-hmm. which is a, it's a big step and I'm not there, but Paul had to, Yeah. I mean, look at what those guys endured. They did not let fear rule over them. They were whipped and beaten, told never to preach in the name of Jesus again, walk right out of there and start preaching Jesus' name again. To me, that's, you know, if I ever, you know, that creeps into my head, like, was Jesus really who he said he was? I always come back to the apostles. Why would you, if you look at all the stories of them, why would you go through what you did for something that, didn't happen yeah, exactly that's what i always that for something as you know because i'm not i'm not gonna lie there's times where like satan put something mm-hmm. in your head you're like did that you know think about jesus did that yeah. really happen then i'm like would well, i wouldn't if it was like you know i was following somebody that said you know they're christ and then 
he dies and nothing <laughs> comes back and then people are trying to like kill me i'd be like yeah i was, I was I wrong screwed it up. <laughs> i screwed it up my bad my bad you guys are right you know yeah. so for me that's 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 i know that you know like i have a relationship with jesus yeah. and, and doesn't there's no real like second guessing but if that ever even that thought ever yeah. even creeps into my head i'm like no, me too dude. no dude I got a military friend who told me something that he said, if you can't, if you can't be safe, be dangerous. There's nothing in the middle. We're safe and we're doing, and I'm, I'm talking about just as a, a plan of action. Yeah. You know, I'm here. We're quiet. We're standing still. We're prepared. Now we're dangerous. They didn't ever believe or think about this idea of being in the middle somewhere. Cause in the middle is where you get yeah, killed. That's where you get hurt. You know, that's, we're, we're either we're either training and we're all yeah. all right and we're yeah. inside the fence and then we go outside the wire now we're dangerous that's, now anybody, we're anytime anybody ever asked me like I, that's one thing in my crossfit career i still try to play some sports do some activities that are a little bit edgy because that's just who i am that's what i want to do that's i need that like this is how i'm wired we know and everybody's like how, how do you keep from getting hurt like you, you like ease up i'm like no i play as hard <laughs> as i can because when you think about mm taking it easy that's usually when you get hurt yeah. you know like yeah. so, sure, so for true. me it's 100 percent all the time hmm? within reason obviously mm -hmm. but when you start to kind of ease up that's personally i think that's when you get hurt you yeah you thinking you, about like, that creeping into your head oh i could do if i do this i could get hurt that's when something happens yeah like this idea of playing offense or coming forward either either you're the hunted mm -hmm. or you're hunting mm -hmm. you know and i and i would rather be in that space where my mindset is moving forward and yeah they're talking a lot about you know ptsd and some of those kinds of things where yeah. people who get in a position where they're put upon or they're being hunted those are the people that really struggle something like the people who are coming forward and they're in this space where they're hunting they're not the ones that are affected by that right. and so i think there's some some principles that we can apply and david's that guy for sure he's the guy that was charging forward all the time he was prepared he was talking to God. He knew who he was created to be. Yep. He had a heart that would say, I'm sorry. And Saul's like, hey, where's this kid that says he's going to fight the Philistine? <laughs> and so he talks to him. Uh, it leads into that. Um, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep your father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and I struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose again, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and fear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. Amen. That's Woo. pretty awesome, right there. Yeah, it's like comes a, like it makes me think of people that tell you, "Hey, you can't do something." Um, you don't need that. You don't need that crap in your life. You know, like if somebody's always telling you, "I don't know," you know, you shouldn't do that, or um, you know, you think you can really do that. David's like, "Yeah, I can do yeah. that." Mm -hmm. Confidence. It's pretty, pretty I think cool. I, I think this is important and you've said it a couple of times and I don't want people to walk away from this listening to this and understand prepared means you did the work right that means yeah. you thought it through right you're not it, just in the health in the in the COVID thing we're paying attention to 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 washing our hands and wearing a mask we're doing all those things we really right. are right. we're not we're not running around being goofy yeah back when I was working in football and coaching in football um you know, the, the moment when the kids would run out of the tunnel and the smoke's going off and everybody's hyped. And see, I've been at practice all week. Mm -hmm. So I know who's prepared. Yeah. I know who's done the work because I've watched them all. Right. And the kids would come running around and they're all jacked and excited and, you know, talking whatever trash they're talking. And, and the big line was always, are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? Smacking helmets and all that. And I started watching that thing and I'm thinking, nope, you're not ready. <laughs> and <laughs> you're not ready. No, you're ready. Yeah. You worked. And, and as soon as all that was over, the kid who hadn't done the work would fail. Yeah. He looked good right. running out in the smoke, but he wasn't ready for the moment. And that's really when I started working with those two words, ready versus prepared. So I quit asking people if they were ready. Where, where was that kid that was probably ready, though, when you look at him? Where was he at in that mix? What do you Mo mean? Most of the time, the people that I've been around that have been yeah. the most ready, 
they're usually off from the hype. Yeah, there was a lot of that for sure. Locked in. So in, in this game, prepared, the kid who was prepared, that to me meant your emotions were in the right place and you did the work. He wasn't the one hyped usually. Right. It was usually yeah. the You're one right. that's just... Kind of came out there, floated out there, was ready to go to work. Yep. It makes me think of we were in London and there was a one rep net max snatch or a hang snatch or something and there are these girls in the back and they're like trying to like put up these PR. big numbers like PR and snatches we go on the floor and nobody hit the girls that were doing this and they didn't hit anywhere near what they should have hit and like me and China and it's not to like boast but it's just like I was like oh I'm not going to climb to what they're climbing because they're going to a one rep max before we're about to go out there and I'm like oh no they're like you want to add plates to this and I'm like I know I can snatch that so I could be like yeah uh. but I'm like no 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 I don't need to snatch that you know what I mean uh, I, I won't name any names and I won't even give the event but I'll say I was part of a team competition before I was on team and somebody I won't even give a gender because it'll give it away <laughs> PR'd their one rep max lift and I'm not even going to say lift because it, before, an hour and a half before, we're going on the floor to compete. And there's so much at a central one rep nervous max system. Yeah. And didn't hit it. And you're just like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. It, uh, people. I, but it's like that prepare. show off, it's, right? Yeah, like yeah. in the back. It's of, like exactly yeah. what you're saying, though. Mm. Mm. And you know, you can just tell. Like for some reason, for me, when I knew I was ready or prepared, it's, I pace. Mm. I just mm. pace. I don't know, like, I just, I can't sit still. You know, some people like to sit and kind of, I just, and then it's not like a fast pace. It's just, I have to move. And I like to pace and I just kind of, I don't know, in that spot. And I, I know that, like, we're good. Like, I'm, obviously, there's a ton of emotion going on in my head, but I don't want to mm-hmm. give that off. I don't want to show that. Mm-hmm. You want, you want, like you said, you want people to be on edge a little bit. They're yeah. like, why? Why is it? Yeah. Stand Re- still. Prepared means you did the work. And your emotions are under control. Right. Ready means your emotions are under control, but you didn't do the work. Right. So we want to be prepared. Yeah, heck yeah. And the word of God says to capture your thoughts mm. and to capture your emotions. That means you got to play offense. Yep. It means you can't just stand there. You've got to do the work to have that under control. Yep. So I like the idea of showing up prepared. Mm. And David was prepared. Yeah. He tried on Saul's army. He's like, nah, or armor. He's like, nah, I can't do this, dude. Why, why would you do something that you wouldn't? Makes yeah, me think of time. CrossFit too, yeah. right? CrossFit, game day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. People are like, well, what did you eat today? What did you do this? What did you do this? How do you do this? What do I, how do I get ready for this event? And I'm like, do what you, you've been doing. what you normally do. <laughs> Warm up how you normally would. Chill out. Like people get yeah. so just. It's like you and lifters kind of. Yeah. Like, why would I do that? Why would I throw something completely new into an event? It's just people blow. It blows my, like you talk about practice players versus game, game day players. It's similar mm. to similar mm. acronym, I guess, or similar metaphor is. Yeah. You, you've got those guys, girls that just they're, they practice. They're there, and they you know they get it. They're good, but then in the game, some people just can't handle it. And you get in a game, and they just their emotions go everywhere, mm-hmm. go haywire. Um, David's got his emotions in check. He knows what his purpose is. Mm-hmm. His purpose is God. His purpose is glorifying God. Mm-hmm. His purpose is to show these Philistines you don't defy our God. And so he's going into it, you know. Yeah, ready. I think it's important too that he gave God the victory before he even mm. even went yep. out. Yep. So he didn't care about looking good. Armor didn't yeah. fit. Yeah. He didn't try to keep on the helmet or any of that. He's like, ah, this is not me. That's big. Let me too. just go do this. Yeah. yeah. So I think in CrossFit, at yeah. least for women, a lot of it is appearance, right? Like they'd rather look good than perform well. You have to kind of separate those things. I don't know about men, but I don't want to speak to men. Yeah, but. I mean, you still want to. You don't want to look like a slob. But well, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's not as much appearance. I mean, definitely. It, like, the reason I started CrossFit was appearance-wise, and then I was like, all right, now it's performance. And mm-hmm. obviously, you still want to you look good, you play good type deal, too. Those so, are both important. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that there's nothing wrong with aesthetics. We, we talked about that the other yeah. day. Significance and aesthetics. Really cool. Yeah. Just, just have, be intentional about that. Uh, it says, why did David choose five stones? He only needed one to kill Goliath. Some suggest somewhat humorously that it was because Goliath had four relatives who were also giants, whom David and his associates later killed in 2 Samuel 21, 18 through 22. There you go. Like you already knew that. Seems like he was prepared again. <laughs> um, Goliath just curses God. Mm. It's not a good thing to do. Man. 
It's just not good, you know? A tough end for him, man. <laughs> yeah. Little redheaded kid the just kicked the rear end. said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. I like how it describes, you know, the diameter of his spear yeah, and all and that, that stuff. I mean, it, the spearhead 15 pounds. Yeah. And I think maybe he had like an armor bearer too. Didn't he? There's part of that somewhere that talks about the dude carried his shield out yeah. there or some point. Oh yeah. The one armor before. bearer. Yeah. Yeah. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a sword, with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied this day. The Lord will deliver you, deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. <laughs> and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is, God in, there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into, your <coughs> into our hands. David's a pretty good trash talker, <laughs> I guess, for the day, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, then David kills Goliath, smashes him right in the face with a stone, <laughs> dead. Oh no. The stone sank in. Stone, yes. mm. stone sank into his skull. Um, and then David beheads Goliath. Then, you know, as a kid, you never hear that part. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, David killed Goliath with a stone. And it doesn't say. And that, then it ends. <laughs> well, but it doesn't say that he killed him. You know, yeah. that stone didn't Oh, yeah, kill it doesn't him. say he yeah. killed him. He just walks over. I think it says he yeah. killed him afterwards, yeah. didn't yeah. it? Yeah, it says, therefore, David ran and, and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of his sheath, and killed him, cut off his head with it. Think about how, how much work that would be, yeah. or the force it would be to sever a head, really. But here's the, the thing, too. He used Goliath's yeah. sword. Yeah. yeah. He took Goliath's yeah. sword out of his sheath. So not only did you get killed or stunned by a rock, but then you got killed by your own sword. Mm. Didn't he come back carrying the head too? Yeah, he so. carries the he- uh, he That part it. cracks me up. Mm-hmm. He's just walking around with his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds horrible to me. <laughs> yeah, if you wonder what happened, here it is. Yeah, here Found it is. It. Um, I think David but, took the head of the Philistine brought to Jerusalem. Oh, so he yeah. just carried it with him for a while. But he kept his armor in his tent. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to take this with me. <laughs> I like what you had to say a second ago about what you were talking to your wife about. Mm-hmm. Because... To me, kind of encapsulating this whole thing is that that we don't we don't want to give in to the fear and to the imagination. We want we want to be smart, pay attention to what's dangerous, do our best, work hard, be prepared, and then you know what we want to trust God, mm-hmm. and that that in the end He has our best interest, yeah. and that there's there's a bunch going on outside our control, and we need to, and and it is it is cool in the end to have in your back pocket that. My salvation's taken care of, and it's going to be all right one way or the other. And, and that we really can just go at this as hard as we can go at it. And if we've done the best that we can do, well, what else are you going to do? That's all you got. And leave the rest of that up to God and, and then be at peace about it. Yeah, we've, we've talked about this a couple of times, but, you know, any time that you start to think about, well, why is God doing this? Like, I, I, don't, I don't have those answers. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I, all I know is I would not be a good God. So uh, it's, it's better that he is and I'm not. So, you know, there's, there's a purpose in all this. And we don't know what that purpose is. And maybe someday we'll be able to find that out. Um, but we, you know, in our reading right now, it was, Paul was talking about, you know, we don't have the, the mind for that. And we can't really understand that. Um, hmm. Like our human, I'm trying to remember, he's t- basically talking about our human spirit can't fathom those things because it's we're earthly we're yeah. flesh mm-hmm. um we do have the spirit of god so there are things we can kind of see um and so that spirit knows god and knows that he is good hmm. and so um i don't know if i'm really saying that the right no way, you are yeah, especially like in Rome, romans we're, 8 yeah talking about how you know the, the spirit is able to um you know kind of sp- speak on our behalf for things that we don't even understand or right. know Right. You know, and that's how much our God loves us that, you know, he's able to meet our needs without us always having to articulate them. Hmm. You know, that's really good. Yeah, but I'm almost a hundred percent of everything that's ever happened in my life. That's been good. I didn't, I didn't know that's what was going to happen. I was just being as present as I can 
doing the work that I knew I needed to do. And then it, it worked out, right. you know, we, and it, and it, it was through adversity most of the time. And some of the hardest things I've ever done put me in a spot where I started to see God's plan in my life. And mm-hmm. I didn't understand any of that, but I like that. I got this, this pastor friend in Hawaii and given this, given this idea, we used to have this thing we would say to each other and it's just kind of dark humor, but we'd be getting into something and we would say to each other, it's going to be okay or it's not. Yeah. Fist bump. Meaning all the things we just talked about. Hey man, we're going to do our best. We're going to show up. We're going to go to work. God's got us or he doesn't. Yep. It's out of our control. I think he does. Yeah. We're fine. Yeah. But I like that. Let's That's just great. get with it, man. Let's just yeah. get into it and it's going to be all right. Yeah, at some point you've got to completely, I mean, honestly, you have to let go. Mm. You know, and, and I think every part of our lives that we try to hold on to are just areas that God can't release his grace into and you know these people that god works mightily they have completely let go of feelings emotions everything and he can really do let god be god and you just be Be jim rich tasia mike you know but we want to hold that stuff because we just don't trust yet Mm. yeah you know we're not supposed to have control over everything we're not supposed to, man. We're not God. That's hard. That's a hard yeah. thing mm-hmm. to it is to capture. I, mean, I'm, I fight for it all the time, right? Yeah. That yeah. just even that leap of me. I'm, I mean, it was like February or March, and I'm just like, I'm a little panicked about Corona mm-hmm. and all the craziness that you're seeing. And I just kind of started reading the Bible, and you know, and I, I read that about you know to live as Christ and to die as gain. And then you're like, did, did Paul really mean that? Like, should I believe that? Right. What does that really mean? Like if, what if I do die, you know, like, and it's a, that was a giant step of, for the first time, probably in my life, you know, I've Mm -hmm. never been persecuted to the point of being injured. So that's never been real to me, Mm -hmm. but you know, now we're facing this unknown, unseen virus, you know, that you, you just have to trust God. That's all you can do Mm -hmm. is trust God, understand the danger. Trust God and then live life. I mean, the best you can. I really like um, your story, your personal story, you know, um, leaving a career, an established career that you were extremely successful at, that paid you well, had benefits and all that stuff. And you were searching hard for what you believed was the next move, purpose in your life, what God would have you to do next. And knowing in that really honestly safe place, it wasn't where you were supposed to be. And you knew it. And, and then doing all the work that you had to do to, to really kind of launch out mm-hmm. and face the fear and, the, you know, pay attention to all of that and get into the space you're at now where, and holy smokes, look around, you're just fine. Yeah. And you're living in the space. But I, I love that part of who you are because you've actually done this in your own life. Thank you, Jim. You've actually proven God in your own life in that way, which Amen. is cool. Yeah. Uh, finish up what I was thinking, what, what we, I was just talking about. This is First Corinthians 2. Relatively short, but I'll read it. This is Paul talking to church in Corinth. It says, When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words or impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling. And my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would not trust in human wisdom but in the power of God. Yet when I am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God, his plan, his plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit, for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. 
When we tell you these things, we do not use the words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's word to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but them themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts, who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. So basically, just can't, we don't know, we can't think with our earthly spirit, I guess, and that, um, you know, it's the spirit that is speaking through us, God's spirit. And so that's basically what we want with this podcast, I think, is we're not trying to, like, give you guys any, we're not learned, learned scholars here, but just trying to speak through. Yeah, just talk through it. I'm, I want to tell, I want to tell one more story. Go ahead. Um, because it's, all of this being said, it all sounds really good, mm-hmm. you know, and, and for the most part, we're, the four of us are pretty blessed, mm-hmm. you know, Amen. Yeah. Very. um, and we've each faced, faced some, some adversity for sure. And we have some stories, but my, my great uncle, who was kind of like my dad, um, he was there for me back in the struggle and his, his words, his words to me were always to keep coming forward. And he's, he's the most spiritual, consistent person I'd ever been around. And he served his whole life like in church and was on the board. And he was the guy that always helping people and giving his time and giving his money away. And, and then and he worked for this company for 40 some odd years. He's just a dude. He can make things happen, you know? Um, and then he gets cancer and he's dying. And I keep a picture in my phone. He, he's, in a, he's in this chair in the hallway in his house. And he looks like hell. He doesn't look like the guy that I remember. And here's the test. The test is when it's all sideways... And it ain't working out like you want it to work out. And you don't feel very good. And you don't understand where you at then. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I flew back to Colorado and I sat next to him as he was dying. And I'm not trying to be melodramatic. Yeah. Yeah. But he still stuck his hand in the air. And he said, you got to keep coming forward. Hmm. It's just one foot in front of the other. And then a few days later, he died. But he never quit. And yeah. the point was, he never quit. He was the same dude in the good times, believing, loving on people, doing what he said he believed in, right. whatever that happened to be. And he was that same dude in all that pain. And I know what was happening inside him, and I know what the cancer was doing to him, and the doctors, and I was there when all the confusion was going on. And he went out that same way. That's, awesome. That's the dude I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't really matter in the end. Honestly, for me... It doesn't really matter whether any of this is true or not. It doesn't. I think it is, but I don't care. It's what I have decided to believe in my life. Mm-hmm. And I don't need a bunch of proof. Nope. And I hope, I hope like crazy that when all of that stuff, whatever that happens, what's in my future, that kind of adversity, I could be that dude. Yep. When nobody else is really around and whatever the problem is, is the problem. And you still say, you know what? No, I still trust. Yep. I, God, I still know you got me. You're still there. At the end of this whole thing, I still believe mm-hmm. I'm going to be that guy. And I think that's kind of what you were just right. saying. You yeah. know, That's what matters to me in the end. Yeah. Yeah. The earthly things are going to pass away. The, the wisdom of the earth is not true wisdom, Yeah, basically. I think we don't have to have it all figured out, is what you're right. saying. We don't, yeah. and we're not going to. Uh-uh. Either we're going to believe the principles and the values, and we're going to trust them, we're going to come forward, or we're not. Yep. Agreed. True. All right, Mike's got a doctor's appointment to get up. <laughs> Just a physical. Right, right, right. <laughs> That I know of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll praise out and we'll go. Right. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this incredible group once again in their heart for you. And uh, just, just pray that once again, like I said, that it would be um, your words that people hear and, and that anybody that needs this just soften their heart to it. And I uh, pray that they would uh, just seek you, Lord, and... and want to know more and and continue to come forward like jim said and and pray that uh hey use us to glorify you and that uh, we would 
we would do the things that you want us to do. And thank you so much for sending your son to die for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.